life is for us. That might be new for uh, some of us, especially if you're new for, in this teaching. I have to tell you, I've been in uh, New Thought teaching since the early 80s, and I'm still getting this on a daily basis. Life is for us. There is something that happens when we awaken to the truth of who we are. When we come into a movement such as New Thought, and we think, oh, okay, change your thinking, change your life. And, and, it, and it's, it sounds simple in principle. It sounds easy in principle. It is simple. However, there is an opportunity in every day to walk away from what we've known. There's an opportunity every day to awaken a little more and a little more to that divine essence of who we know ourselves to be. There is something in us, it is innate, it is our natural essence, it is our very nature that knows that we are sacred, divine beings. You see it in a baby. You see in a, baby, a newborn baby when they come into this world, they are just pure love and light. And I think, I, I, I don't know when it happens that we stop doing that to each other, but I, I, I encourage this, I encourage this in my classes too, when I, when I mention this, is to, uh, do it to adults. Just go, oh my God, you're so adorable. I love you so much. You're so beautiful. When do we stop that? For me, I learned that very early on. I, I, I kind of learned this idea by, by observation that somehow, some things I probably needed to, I don't know, I don't know if it's basic survival stuff, but protect myself, if you will, be a little controlled, uh, pull myself back a little more, and, and by observing the things that were going on, especially in my, my upbringing, in my, my own home, I don't share about that too much, but it wasn't the most supportive environment. I didn't get out of, hey sweetie, you're gorgeous, yeah, welcome to the world. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. So, so come the early 80s, I, I, I had the opportunity to start doing that to myself. I highly recommend it in the mirror too. <laughs> what I've realized in, in New Thought, since I've been on this New Thought journey, uh, is that I, I'm really just awakening, reawakening to that sense of who I am as a divine being. I'm reawakening to uh, really trust myself, that divinity, in a whole new way. And, and this whole idea of life is for us uh, was a new concept for me. And it continues to be something that I am completely in awe about. Because if I seem to feel separated or somehow alone or pulled myself back, which I spent a good chunk of my life pulling myself back and waiting for the right opportunities before I would come forth, if I just trust that as the divine presence of the infinite right here and right now, I have all the wisdom, I have all the prosperity, I have all the love, I have all the safety, I have all the joy, I have everything that I could ever need. Because really, I am life. I am God expressing. So, so it, it then becomes this new relationship with my own mystical presence, if you will, my own mystical self, is, is trusting that I am life, so of course life is for me. And uh, I just, Rodney, you want to put up the next slide? This may not seem like an epiphany to some. <laughs> However, it was an epiphany to me. I realized that I spend, have spent a lot of time in my life doing this tug of war. Did you ever do that? Tug of war. And, and not only with other people, and call it power struggles, call it whatever you want, trying to get your own way, trying to make a point. It's a, this power struggle. When, when we have this idea that life is somehow against us, we tend to engage in this type of behavior. And look at their faces, right? It's very, you know, angry and constrictive and and, and I can guarantee you, if, if you felt that in your body right now, it, it's constrictive, right? What it does is it cuts off all the flow of the divine. Life is just consistently wanting to expand and evolve and give to us, give to us, give to us, through us, as us. And so I, I realized that I, I found myself in a, in a bit of a power struggle and I thought, oh my God, this is like a tug of war. Not only, it, 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 and what would happen? What happens if one person sets down the rope? <laughs> well, it depends on how hard they're tugging, right? <laughs> if they're tugging really hard, they're going to fall on their butts. Or, you know, they may just go, oh, and not play, or they may pick up the rope and go play somewhere else. But the choice is mine. And when I saw that, I mean, it's so, so elementary. <laughs> 
for me. But, but when I had that image in my head, I, I all of a sudden woke up to letting go of the struggle. Letting go of the struggle with other people, letting go of, of not trusting, just even a eensy, teensy, weensy little bit of what's going on in life, and start trusting myself more. And you can go on to the next one. That's enough of that energy. <laughs> and, and, and so I realized that this whole idea of trusting that life is for us is about going back within and trusting. See, there's more to trust, I've learned, than just trusting you or trusting that the sun's going to rise or trusting that this is going to happen. And it's more than knowing myself to be trustworthy. It's much deeper than that. It shifted for me this level of trust and knowing that life is indeed for me, because life is me, when I considered the idea that a deeper way to look at this is that if I am spirit, if God is all there is, then therefore this divine perfection of spirit is expressing in and through and as me now. So therefore I can trust the people in my life. I can trust that divine wisdom brought them to me. I can trust the situation, even if it's something that doesn't feel comfortable, you know, though there's a pony in here somewhere, right? <laughs> even if I don't understand it and I don't like it, I can trust that somehow divine wisdom has brought that to me because I am divine wisdom. And I have also found that the less I try to figure things out, the better off I am. And that's because of this. That's me. Anxiety girl, able to jump to the worst conclusion in a single moment, or a single bound, right? I have retired that cake. How many can relate to that? I think, yeah, yeah, the hands are going up. I think it is, for me, myself personally, I can only share about myself. It is a built-in mechanism for me that I learned early on conditioned very early on to think that, you know, waiting for the shoot, other shoe to drop or waiting for something to happen, something's going to happen to me. Life doesn't happen to me. Life happens through me. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I came into a teaching such as this where I thought, okay. So, so for me to jump to conclusions that life is somehow against me, just got to tell you, sets me up to jump on that hamster wheel of continually having drama, continually having upset, continually being confused when that is not the truth of life. That is not the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am is absolute clarity and wisdom. And if I take a moment to stop and be willing to set down that, that rope of anxiety, everything shifts in me. We all know the physiological effect of stress. It makes us stupid. <laughs> we stop thinking. We stop thinking and, and we don't we don't move clearly, we don't we don't communicate clearly. At least I don't. I don't communicate clearly, I, I don't think clearly, and I, I it, it, it's not good. <laughs> I can just say it's not good. So I, I think my biggest challenge in my life has been retiring that anxiety girl cape because I, I found that I, I had an addiction. You know? I had an, I had an addictive personality to begin with, but hasn't served me well. Well, maybe it has. <laughs> Anyways, I realized that I was so habitually addicted, and you know, I don't want to say addicted where I'm powerless over it, but I, I realized it was such an ingrained habit for me to, to jump to conclusions, to see somehow that life was going to sneak up around me and give me a whack on the side of the head when I wasn't expecting it, and life does not do that. I do that. <coughs> I do that to me. And so when I can relax and deepen my relationship with myself to move into that sweet awareness of who I know myself to be, who I know you to be, then I don't have the level of judgment on other people. I don't have a level of judgment when I look in the mirror. I don't have a level of anxiety, for sure, my body is grateful for that, that, that I used to carry around. And, I, and I, I'll tell you that something happened the other day that, that triggered uh, some anxiety in me, and it really caught me by surprise, and I thought, what's, what's, what's going on? And I, and I realized I, I, was, I was making it about somebody else, and, um, and it, I was just making stuff up. 
And I thought, and that's what we do, right? Anything that's going on in here, generally, you know, it's all made up. If it's not truth, it's made up. <laughs> and so I, I, start, I found myself starting to make up this whole story in my mind that was really triggering this anxiety. And I thought, what's going on? Why am I making that up? And I realized that I'm making it up because I, I just, something got triggered. I clicked into my old default of anxiety. I wasn't thinking about it clearly. And I thought, you know, if anybody had asked me if I did that simple psychological transference onto anybody else, I would say, no, I did. That's exactly what I was doing. I was putting my stuff on this other person, and I thought, wow, why don't I just give them the benefit of the doubt? And I thought, do I give everybody the benefit of the doubt? And I thought, I was taught not to give people the benefit of the doubt, and that was for my own protection. That was for my own safety, so I thought. And so I, I've been undoing this habit of, of uh, and I've been doing it for 50 years anyways, of undoing this habit of holding myself back, putting everybody else before me, keeping a little distance between me and the next person or me and the next situation. I, I think that uh, this level of trust is a, is a practice. I think that trust and faith in itself is a practice. It's a spiritual practice. And what I've realized is that I have been practicing this over the years. And I do trust life and I do trust myself at such a, a greater level than I, than I did, say, 30 years ago. However, there are times when I get in my own way, where I pull myself back, I hold myself back, and what that does is when I pull myself back, and I think that, and I forget that life is for us, right? You can go back. That life is for us, that there's that, that level of disconnect. And that level of disconnect I first feel within myself. But you see, when I feel and notice that disconnect within myself, you can bet that I'm feeling a separation in my finances. I'm feeling separation in this health and wholeness and vitality. I'm feeling separation in my communication with other people. I'm feeling separation in my connections with other people. And it all starts from the point of disconnect for myself. And that was just a habit I got myself into. This is just disconnect. There's no way we can disconnect from who we are. We are the divine in action. We are God in action, each of us individually expressing our unique gifts and talents. And every day I get to remind myself of that. I think that faith and trust and trusting life, that life is for us, is about, well, it's similar to me, confidence. How many people have, how many of you have waited so you felt a little more sure, a little more confident before you did something new. <laughs> and, and, and I would do that, right? It's kind of like saving for a rainy day. That never made sense to me either. <laughs> and I realized, I've realized on this journey that we're making it all up anyways. <laughs> and every day is a new day. And every day I have the opportunity to choose again. Every day I have the opportunity to remember life is for us, life is for us, life is for us. Okay, that's my new mantra, life is for me. Every day we have the opportunity to remember that in so many ways. And, and this whole idea around confidence, I would do that. I would use that as an excuse to not do some of the things I wanted to do because it was new, I didn't have a point of reference for it, I didn't know what to do next. But I can tell you that by doing it is how you build your confidence. By choosing a new thought is how you allow new thinking to come into your practice. Uh, by going up to a stranger and introducing yourself is how you get over that kind of fear of holding yourself back. At least I have found that in myself. Every day, you see, you see it, it comes down to the opportunity, or well, really it's about trust is very much uh, about risk. And we're all taking risks every day. We are. And, and so, you know, I, I have the saying that when you come to the edge of everything you've ever done, you know, what next? Well, you could jump. You could jump, or you could back up and retreat, or you could just take another step. You could just take a deep breath, remember who you are, and realize that the ground is always solid be beneath your feet because life is for us. There is no way that we could be separate from ourselves because we are the divine. The divine cannot be separated from any aspect of itself. 
So therefore, we are not separate from other people. We may feel the absence of other, others in our lives. We may feel the absence of certain things in our lives. But it is, it is not gone. It is, we are not separate from it. It's us who gets in our own way. I get in my way a lot, or I have in the past. So you can go onto that next slide. I love this, I love this uh, by Anais Nin. And the day came when the risk it took to remain tight in the bud, wow, <laughs> was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. <laughs> Every day we have the opportunity, and an opportunity when we take it is actually taking a risk. Every time we take a risk and we take action in uh, something new, we are building trust. We are building confidence. We are building a new mental equivalent. We are building a new life in every way. Every, everything about my life today is different. Everything. My physical body, all the cells, every system, constantly rearranging itself. Why? Because it's, it's, it's infinite intelligence and it knows what to do to redesign itself for optimal health and wholeness in every moment of every day. My relationships are different. Why? Because my relationship with myself is continuously changing and evolving and growing. The greatest relationship you can have is in that sweet awareness of who you are as the divine. Because all relationships, every aspect of life comes out of your relationship with big S self. So uh, I, I wanted to share with you, there's W. Clement Stone, He's a mentor of Jack Campbell, speaks of inverse paranoia. So when you, so you go to this idea, worry, concern, holding yourself back, these old habits, they're all based on lies. See the lie that we're not good enough, the lie that uh, I don't have enough, the lie that there's something wrong with me, whatever. We, we've all developed that little mind chatter at one point or another. Doesn't mean it's real. And, and a lot of people have, you know, some people have it more than others. And what I love about this idea of inverse paranoia was he says, instead of thinking the world is against me, I choose to think that the world is for me. So what if? What if you chose that? What if all of a sudden when fear came up, all of a sudden when, when something just really called to you that you wanted to do something new? It, it, I'm reading uh, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Wobbles, and he says in there that desire is potential want, waiting for action. Desire is potential waiting to be expressed. And I love that. Because anytime we think of something new or, or get excited about something, that's, that's our soul's longing. That's that divine expression of spirit just wanting to come out and play. So let it out. What would happen if you did something new every day that you've never done before? What if? I, like, I, I have this practice sometimes of, of writing in a, a journal, what if? What if this happened? Well, what if this happened? Well, then this would happen. And what if that happened? Well, this would happen. And go on. It, and it's interesting. I've, I've learned a lot about myself. And ultimately, it comes down to, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'll be okay either way. So why not choose to see that life is actually for us? There is a general universal law that is consistently, actively, at work, in every moment, responding to everything that we think, everything that we do, everything that we say. If I'm thinking that life is somehow against me, I'm creating a whole bunch of stuff I don't want, basically. If I choose to live my life from thinking that life is for us, I have amazing support, I have amazing connections with people in my life, I have a, an abundance of prosperity <coughs> flowing into my life. I have creativity flowing in new ways. I have a joy that is unspeakable. It's, it's something new that's continuously growing and, and expanding in me. And it's because every day I choose to see that life is for us. And again, I say that life is for us. It cannot be against us because we are life itself. Life is just wanting to express itself in and through and as us. And that ends up ultimately being our experience. So holding myself back, I don't want to play that game anymore. Play and tug of war, that consistent struggle because I think somehow I have to be in control of everything. 
It's not so much about control, you know, to create the life of my desire is, is not so much about control. It's about allowing. And sometimes I just have to stand still, take a deep breath, open up, and do something new. Think a new thought, take a new action, speak to somebody new, pay attention. Pay attention to my environment and my own thinking, pay attention to my environment in which I live and, and, and in surrounding myself. Recognizing that everything is spirit. I can recognize that everything is an opportunity. There is a blessing in everyone and everything, so I pay attention. I pay attention to the most subtle nuances in my life, whether it's a song that comes on the radio or it's a dragonfly that buzzes by and stops in front of my face and flies off. I pay attention to those things. Of course, I make up what it means to me because we're all making this stuff up. If we make stuff up with the idea that life is for us, you're going to have an amazing life. I remember Devon saying to me a couple of years ago, are you ready for amazing? And I thought, ooh, am I ready for amazing? Why, yes I am. And my life is amazing. You know, it has its ups and downs, and I play my own little games with myself sometimes because I'm still learning and still growing, as are all of us. We're all a work in progress. We are all spirit expanding and evolving. So we get to see ourselves in a new way every day. And, and to share that, to bring that out, to share that authenticity with everyone in your midst is the blessing. One thing that I, I've noticed about people, I thought I attracted people into my life and sometimes question that. And <laughs> the flip side of that is they're also drawing me in. There is this unseen energy, this unseen unity, this unseen connection that draws us to one another. So if somebody's in your midst and you're not quite comfortable about that, remember who you are and then from that remembering of who you are, you will begin to see who they are. And you'll begin to open up to the possibility to allow whatever the blessing is that they're offering you. This teaching of the science of mind is very simple. <clears throat> Pay attention to your thoughts. Remember that you are the divine in action. There's a law that is consistently at work. You know, this whole idea of faith, worry is faith. <laughs> worry itself is faith that something bad's going to happen or something's not going to work out the way you think it's going to work out. It's just a, the flip side of the coin. It's still one coin. It's life. Life and the law, the law is still going to respond. Life is still going to respond. So where's your thinking? Where's your environment? You know, or how's your mental environment? And are you willing to do something new? And that involves risk. We, we don't just, you know, all of a sudden walk into a class and go, I have this deep, profound knowing. <laughs> all is calm in my world. I'm healthy and whole. I'm a millionaire. My relationships are good. Communication is easy. I didn't do that. I didn't do that because there was a whole lot of stuff I had to learn about myself. And that learning was not about judgment or making myself wrong. That learning was about letting go of the things, letting go of yesterday, letting go of the past, and all the ways that I conditioned myself into playing a really small game in this life because I, I didn't know that life was for me. I know that life is for me. There is no separation in anything or anyone. Every day I have the opportunity to reawaken to that. I no longer choose to play a small game. I choose to know that life is for me. And I invite you to choose every day that life is indeed for you. I was thinking, the, the, uh, well, I, I thought of this Rumi quote too, we're all walking each other home. The important thing to remember is when you're doing your inner work and you're processing all this and you're discovering who you are and you're redefining yourself and you're stepping new into an amazing life, that you're not doing it alone. That's what the community is about. That's what the classes are about. None of us does anything alone. So surround yourself with the people that are going to recognize the divine in you. Surround yourself with people that really get that you are spirit. Surround yourself with people that are going to go, oh my God, you're so adorable. Welcome to the world. I'm so glad you're in my life. You're amazing. You're pure energy and pure love. 
Surround yourself with those types of people and allow that spirit which is just wanting to express itself through you to be nurtured. Allow that to be nurtured in you. We get to nurture that within ourselves. It's not something we do alone. So when you, you settle in to do your, your inner work, and I've got some healing around that, I've got some forgiveness work to do around that, it's an easy place for us to disconnect. Instead, let us just connect with one another and build that connection, because that connection is going to lead you back to yourself. Again, I'll repeat that uh, phrase that I love that Reverend Larry de Russia said many years ago when he spoke here. And he said, when I can know for you what you do not yet know for yourself, then I, be then I become the bridge for your transformation. I repeat that. When I can know for you what you do not yet know for yourself, then I become the bridge for your transformation. We're all connected. We speak of oneness and unity all the time. Every day we have the opportunity to open up which is a risk in itself. So let's stay tight in the bud. Don't hold yourself back and look for excuses to, to not play a bigger game. Don't uh, look at life. It's my invitation. It, it would behoove you to instead of looking at life as against you, to know that life is for you in every way. That's going to open you up. That's going to open you up to opportunities, love, abundance, health. Joy, beauty, that, that whole delicious list of what God is. It's all in here. You are life. One of my favorite movies is Cocoon. <laughs> These amazing, amazing white beings come in. My favorite scene in that movie is uh, people, you know, they, they look human, right? But they're really light beings. And um, this woman is, you know, she just kind of sheds her body. And, She's flying around as a light, and she hears somebody coming, so she like puts her earth suit or whatever back on. She, you know, she puts a human-looking thing back on. She forgets to tuck a little bit behind her ear, and this brilliant light is shining out. And the human sees it, and that's who we are. We are that pure essence of light and love. Every moment, we have the opportunity like I said before, there, there's something, though, that is so specific to each of us. I invite you to consider, number one, that yes, life is for you. Number two, what is it? What is the greatest gift that comes through you? What is your genius? That's a phrase I like. I'm living my genius. What is your genius? And nurture that. Some of us it's nurturing, mothering. Some of us it's uh, service. Some of us it's painting. Some of us it's whatever, whatever. The list goes on and on. You each have an individual gift that you have come here to share with life. And life is waiting for you. The world is waiting for each and every one of us. Rodney, I love this. Be you. Be you big. Yeah. Be you joyful. Be you all the time. Do not hide. Do not squirrel pieces of yourself away. Be you. You have something amazing to offer this life. It is not based on anything you've ever done, any place that you have ever been. The past does not define who we are. We have the opportunity in every moment to take a risk, to do something new, to stand in our faith, to develop and nurture that deep, profound inner knowing, which is really, in essence, just the awakening of that light, that light being of who you are to come forth. I want to see it. I want to see it. My work has been about letting it out. Right? It seems to, to be that way for a lot of people I know. I'm going to open up a little more. I'm going to open up a little more. My invitation to you is just open up. We all know who you are. We all recognize that light in one another and every one of us. So let it out. <clears throat> Choose to live your life in faith and that knowingness. The opportunities are amazing. Life is amazing. 
And always, 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 whenever you question anything, remember, life is for us. Thank you.